Welcome to Grade 12 Financial Maths. Please note that in this video course I am not going to be going over previous year financial maths but I do have courses available on the website so just go to the All Courses tab and you can look for Grade 11 Financial Maths, Grade 10 Financial Maths, it's all there. This In this Grade 12 course I'm just going to be focusing on the new concept for Grade 12 and that is an annuity. Now I've seen students who get they pretty much go through the whole of grade 12 and still don't grasp the idea of what they are trying to teach in grade 12. In grade 12 we are introduced to something called an annuity. Now what an annuity is is the following. Well let me first explain about gr what you did in grade 11. So in grade 11 you would typically have a question like this. You would have a person who exam for example invests 500 Rand into an account and then maybe adds 400 Rand in three years time or they take out 200 Rand and then the interest rate changes. An annuity however, that is not what an annuity is. An annuity is something like you would like to save up 10,000 Rand in five years time for example and you would like to do that by making regular payments of the same value at specific intervals. So for example, you might want to make monthly payments. So you will make the same you'll pay the same amount every single month or you'll pay the same amount every year or every quarter or every 6 months for example. So you do something regularly. So here's the difference. In grade 11 you would be asked a question such as John invests 500 Rand in a savings account which earns 13% per year compounded monthly. Calculate how much John will have in 5 years. So for that type of question you would simply use the compound interest formula where your starting amount would be 500 Rand, your interest would be 13% which is 0 0.13, you would compound it monthly and for 5 years you would say 5 times 12. In grade 12, it's slightly different. John invests 500 Rand each month into a savings account which earns 13% compounded monthly. Calculate how much John will have in 5 years. You see the difference is, is that now John will be paying 500 Rand every single month. He's not going to just make a once-off payment and let it grow. He's going to make multiple payments. So what you could imagine is that you would, for, for example, the first 500 Rand that he pays, well that would be in the account for 5 times 12. Then you would have to add that to the next 500 Rand which would earn a little bit, uh, what would earn less interest because the first payment that he makes will be in the bank account for the longest. The second payment that he makes will be um, in the account for 59 months because 5 times 12 is 60 so this one would be 59. Then you would have to add the next one which would be in the account for 58 months and you would have to add all the way to the very end when he makes his last payment of 500 Rand. And so what I'm going to do is give you a brief, a, a, brief, a brief overview of how they came up with the formula that we'll use because otherwise it's going to take a long time. You'd have to do like 61 or 60 different calculations because this number would have to go all the way down to there. So first thing we need to look at is we're going to pretend or we're going to we're going to do our calculation starting at the very end and going in that direction it just makes the maths a lot easier so let's see what type of sequence we form if we go in that direction we'll have a look what's happening the first term is 500, then it's 500, 1 plus 0.13 over 12 to the power of 1. Then it's the same thing to the power of 2. And then it's the same thing it would be to the power of 3, and then it would be to the power of 4. Can you see that that is actually a geometric sequence where the common ratio is this? Because if I take the number 500 and then I times it by that, then I'm going to end up with 500, 1 plus 0 0.13 over 12. And if I times that by another one of these, then I end up with 500, 1 plus 0 0.13 over 12 to the power of 2. So we've got a geometric pattern on our hands. And I just want to quickly mention this 500 Rand is the last 500 Rand that John would spend right at the end of his account. 
this amount here was made one month before the account closed and that's why it gets one month's worth of interest. This was the payment just before so it gets two months worth of interest and blah de blah de blah. So remember the uh, geometric sum formula which went like this. But I'm just going to switch it around so that it's Rn minus 1 and R minus 1. Remember in that geometric video in series and sequences, I did say that you can do it both ways. You can either have it as 1 minus Rn over 1 minus R, or you could have it as Rn minus 1 over R minus 1. I'm going to choose this version. And to make the maths very easy, we're going to start at the beginning, or at the, at, the, at the end of John's account. So that will be this 500 Rand. We're not going to start at the beginning over here. We could, but it just makes the maths very complex. So A is going to be term 1, which is 500. R is going to be the common ratio, which we said was 1 plus 0 0.13 over 12 to the power of N minus 1. And that's all over R, which is 1 plus 0 0.13 over 12 minus 1. Now at the bottom, the 1's cancel, and so we just end up with 0 0.13 over 12. And so here we have something called a future value formula. And so the future value formula goes like this. Where the future value of your account is equal to your monthly payment, which in this case was 500. See, there it is. 1 plus i, so there's the 1 plus over here, to the power of n, to the power of n, minus 1, we have the minus 1, over, and then I think we've just lost this part of here, i, because remember we said that these 1s cancel, and so there we have i. So this is a formula that adds up all of those payments. So remember, John makes monthly payments and each of those little payments is going to earn interest. Some of them will be in the, in the bank account for long. Some of them will be in the bank account for a very short time. However, we want to add all of them together. So we use the sum formula for a geometric sequence, which takes on the following form and we just call it FV to represent the future value of the investment. There is a different formula called the present value formula, but that we'll discuss in later videos.